Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to day number three of our seven day fast and consecration. Let me say right out of the gate that I love you all so much. And I have been so blessed by the outpouring of the people who have decided to take this seven day corporate consecration with us. And I'm praying that the Lord would do some things personally and very powerfully in your life. Because I'm praying that God will reveal himself to each of us personally in a brand new way. God has big plans for us and you're going to do great things in him. So as we're preparing for day number three, I'm praying that we have a new commitment to the things of God. A new commitment to do what God has called us to do. A new commitment to local ministry. A new commitment to, to giving and supporting the work of the Lord. A new commitment to being who God has called us to be. I also pray that from our day two focus, that we have opened ourselves up to a new way, that our message is still the same, but our methods have to change. Sometimes we deal with divine detours in life, and I can promise you that God's way sometimes may not be the fastest way, but it's always the safest way. But today, we are going to focus on day number three on a new heart, a new heart. And so the scripture to meditate today, we're going to focus in on Psalm 51 and verse 10. That's Psalm 51 and verse number 10. Here are the words of David. This is what he says. He says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now, a couple of times a year, I go to see my doctor for just routine checkups and without fail each time someone comes in the room and they check my heart it doesn't matter when i go or why i go before anything else happens my doctor or her designee comes in the room and they check my heart and when you think about it it makes perfect sense if my muscles are fine but my heart is bad if my mind is strong but my heart is sick. If I'm physically fit in every other way, but my heart is still sick, that means I'm not in good health and almost nothing else matters. And so during this time and during this season, God is simply saying, I need you to allow me, God, to do a spiritual heart check. I need to find out if your heart is sick. I need to find out if you feel seemingly are in good health in every other area of your life, but there's some issues of your heart and with the recent events that we have experienced in our world and our streets and even in our nation's capital it's a clear picture of the condition of our hearts our nation is in need of healing because we have a serious heart condition when white privilege is still the order of the day we have a heart condition when the justice system only works for certain people when it can be considered to be a crime to be black or brown in America, we have a heart condition. And when people of color in 2021 are still seen as subpar citizens in our nation, the very nation that we helped to build, America has a serious heart condition. But even in our churches, we have a heart condition. When women are seen as second class citizens to men, and when the saints are seemingly welcome in the sanctuary, but sinners seemingly are not. We have a serious heart condition. Hate is a heart condition. Racism, that's a heart condition. Sexism and classism, those indeed are heart conditions. And these heart conditions can only be healed when we invite the God of heaven into our hearts personally to examine us and to change us, not from the outside in, but from the inside out. And in Psalm 51, David gives us a great example of just how to do that. Because at the time of the text, David has committed probably the most egregious act of his entire life. He's, com he's committed adultery with Bathsheba, and had her husband Uriah, one of his most loyal soldiers, killed to cover up what he did. The prophet Nathan comes to, to David and says, 
You were wrong for what you did. And God is not pleased with you. David acknowledged this wrong. He acknowledged this sin. And with a contrite heart and with a repentant heart, with a broken spirit, David prayed these words that are written in Psalm 51 and 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Now, I, I need you to see this. In order for David to ask God to create in him a clean heart, that means that he first had to acknowledge that his heart was unclean. David had to acknowledge that his impure actions came out of an impure heart. And Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 tells us that above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. David says to God, he says, my heart is impure, my heart is unclean, and the things that I have done with my hands are the result of the condition of my heart. But David also shows us when the text says, creating me a clean heart, O God. That says that David understands that what I need, I can't do it on my own. What I need to happen in my life, the transformation that I need to take place within, is not simply within my power to do. It's not about restraint. It's not about me thinking better thoughts. God, I need you to do a work in my heart. This is for somebody who says, I have some things about my life that I'm trying to change, some things about my behavior that I'm trying to change, some things about the way I feel hurt and, and that I'm in harm that I'm carrying in my heart and in my spirit. David shows us. He says that God is the one who can create in us a clean heart. He's the only one who's certified and capable to get the job done. Now, David says, he says, creating me a clean heart. Then look at what he says. He says, and renew the right spirit within me. Now, you got to notice this. David says, create in me a clean heart. He does not say make in me a clean heart. Because create means to start without any pre-existing materials. Make, it, make means to just take materials that already exist and form them differently. He says, no, he says, but God, I need you to start from scratch. I don't want you to use any of the pre-existing materials from my previous heart because I, I have some things in my heart that are deep-seated. Racism may be deep-seated in my heart. Hatred may be deep-seated in my heart. Pain from previous times that I've been harmed are, are deep-seated in my heart. David says, don't make a, a clean heart. Don't just scrub the heart I have. He says, create in me. A clean heart here it is he says and renew the right spirit within me now that word renew means to make new again which means that at some point David had the right spirit at some point his intentions his intentions were good at some point his motives were actually pure but somehow along the way his heart became impure his spirit became contaminated and he asked God create in me a clean heart and so today as we focus on a new heart we should ask God to examine us thoroughly see those things within us that we cannot see God and reveal them to us in a way that we can handle and I'm praying that as God begins to reveal you to you the things that are in your heart the things that are in my heart that he would stand next to us as the comforter that he is and help us to be able to see the clear picture of what's there, but to let us know that there is no hurt that heaven cannot heal. God is going to change us from within, but we have to allow him to come in and to do the work. And so today, the prayer that we want to pray, it stems from words of David actually in Psalm 139, verse 23 and verse 24. And here is the prayer that we want to focus on today. Here's what David said. Search me, O God. And know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. Let me read that again to you. You gotta get it. I want you to I want you to take this with you. Psalm 139, verse 23, 24. He says, Search me, O God, powerful words, and know my heart. He says, I need you to know me. Search me, God, because I can't search myself. 
He says, try me, which means prove me, examine me, put me to the test so that what's in my heart comes out. He says, try me and know my thoughts. I need you to be accountable. I need to be accountable to you, God, for even the thoughts that I think. He says, put me on trial, God, so that every thing in me comes out so that I can see what's in me. He says, know my thoughts. Hold me accountable, God, to what I think. And when I'm thinking wrong, God revealed it to me. This is what David is saying. He says, and if there be any wicked way in me, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. He says, try me. Show me my own thoughts. Hold me accountable to what's in my heart. Change me from within. And if you see anything that shouldn't be that way, change it and change me. So if you find anything in me that shouldn't be, take it out and strengthen me. Because I want to be right. I want to be whole. And I want to be saved. In Jesus' name, amen. So today, stay strong, stay focused, and keep pushing. God bless you.